that's the hope. Our, uh, our practice format certainly is designed to reflect that. And then I'll assess the first few days to see if that, that is actually possible. But from what I saw today, yeah, the experience is allowing us to, to start in a different practice model than we normally do. And so far, so good. Yeah, I, I wanted to see them take a step forward, but I think more importantly, they wanted to see themselves take a step forward. And with all the uh, progress um, in their first, well, the first four years basically, and they were part of, they didn't like the finish last year and they didn't like the circumstances in which it finished. And um, so they were asked um, and it was presented, don't come back unless, right, um, you're you're passionate about this program improving, you improving, and and really mean, and want to come back. And so it wasn't a wasn't a chance just to be a placeholder year. And um, to their credit, they've they've worked really hard. And so, yeah, great experience for us coming back, um, and increased commitment, which is great. Last year was so obviously disjointed for a lot of reasons. You had a lot of responsibilities beyond coaching football. Um, what was it, the mood or the, or the vibe today? Because it, it seemed like get back to normal. We, so you had jumped Coach 2 Jay early to maybe set the tone? It, yeah, it was an intentional tone setter, but um, it's nice to talk without a mask on. And it's nice to, to get a team prepared without the COVID protocols being front and center and the very first thing I consider every day. Um, and it's nice to be able to just have a disproportionate or maybe a regular amount of time to focus on football. And so, yeah, so far so good. And I'm cautiously optimistic that it will continue to be that way. Do you anticipate that maybe a, a more sharpness or be able to progress faster because that's not weighing you down enough? Well, I, I would hope so, but I think that'll be the same really for anyone because there currently isn't um, the extra COVID uh, kind of cloud of protocols that were necessary, but just something that we're challenging to manage. Um, so, yeah, it felt much more like normal, and and that was it's been a long time. You mentioned the value of experience. How do you quantify the, the benefit of Brennan having played a full season as the leader of the team? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that I can quantify it, um, but I think what will happen is uh, his performance will quantify it and I think the team's record will quantify it. So until then, I don't think I can, uh, but I think the yield will then do that for us. In terms of coming out of um, summer conditioning, Grizz was really happy with where he saw guys. What, what did you think of the plan you guys put together, and how did you feel like you guys came out? So I, I really like the plan. Um, in the summer, as the head coach, I am not allowed to have much involvement. That's why it's so critical that you have the right leaders and owners of areas. Um, I didn't see a single summer workout, um, but I'm limited to not see workouts um, or lead them or coach them. Um, lots of what we call state changes, guys moving from one color to another. And from what I saw today, uh, the team was fit and able to handle a pretty strong workload on day one. and. That really is my first test. I usually see the strength numbers and I see the state changes and I'm always impressed by those. Um, until I see our team practice, I'm hesitant to put my stamp on it. Um, but from what they were asked to do today and the volume they were asked to cover and carry, uh, they were well prepared. So did you uh, think you got accomplished what you hoped to today? Uh, too early to say. Um, the practice format that we had designed um, in anticipation of where we'd be ready and our experience looks to be right on point. And so that part, um, this is pre-watching the film, which, yeah, I think, and probably everyone thinks I'd be able to tell. I'm wrong at least at least 50% from what I say right after the game or right after practice until I see the film. So, I don't know. You look at the experience that y'all bring back, even compared to the rest of the ACC, it looks like a lot of teams are bringing back that kind of veteran groups. How do y'all think that makes you stack up? I think we have as good a chance as anyone to win the league, and I think it's dead even, but I would not rule us out. You talk about the experience coming back, but there's several new faces, too. You got to see for the first time out here with some transfers, especially in the secondary. What are some of the things that you already noticed from these new faces? Um, really, maybe not so much I've noticed from the new faces, but the effect of new faces is competition and urgency from existing players at that spot. And 
Well, there's a, a, a pretty standard old saying, right, that uh, competition makes us better coaches, and that's what I saw today. Uh, there was more urgency and a higher level of concentration and production at the positions where there's transfers that came in. Haven't had any yet, again, because I wasn't here. Well, I was here, but I wasn't, watch, I wasn't watching our summer workouts, and we didn't punt today. And so it was a, a kickoff focus day, so I won't be able to really comment on him until I see him. Um, and punt is scheduled for tomorrow. So, yeah, we'll follow up. From a health you, standpoint, where do, you, where do you feel like you are? I noticed Derek Devine had a boot on with a, with a cart, um, but in terms of other guys. We're, we're healthy. Um, we had two injuries in the summer at offensive line and Jonathan Leach and Derek Devine. The rest of our team is ready to go. What are you looking at at the linebacker position next to Jackson? Because they earned to start. Um, how do you feel about that spot? Yeah, don't know yet. Um, so I really, right, Noah Taylor and Nick Jackson are proven and established. Others are not. So work in progress and too early to speculate. Do you feel good about kind of the options you have there? Or no, I'm not up at night yet. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. What are the next steps of Wayne County for you to get the production from the tradition that you want to see? Yeah, I, I think it has a lot less to do with Wayne and more to do with um, our offensive front and the holes he has. Wayne is a really good player, probably our best special teams player, um, and capable in every area. And so. Um, yeah, when the holes are bigger, uh, when the blocking is more consistent, the traditional run game will be better. But it really is not so much on him. I think he's doing a really nice job. Um, lots and lots of competition at the running back spot um, with Ronnie uh, Walker being back and Mike Hollins being back and Devin Darrington from Harvard coming in and who's had a really strong summer and Ahmad Faustin showing up. It's probably our deepest position. Um, uh, but really, good luck beating out Wayne. He just seems to win every drill anytime they're competing, and he's demonstrated that. So, yeah, I, I like his chances. If it's all the line, given the experience that you have there, I would think you'd be optimistic. I'm optimistic. You had a pretty big home run hitter last year in LaBelle. Yeah. I know he's hurt, and I don't know what's, what's his status, and do you have somebody that can fill that role, do you think? Well, we don't have anyone else that's 6'7". Um, so, um, but we do have Dontavian Wicks back, so we basically traded, and he had two or three or four uh, long catches today. Um, so I, um, I like that. I'd rather have them both. Um, Lavelle is on track. This was his second knee injury, so it takes a little bit longer. Um, but there is a chance that he returns at the end of the year. Uh, so that time frame hasn't changed from when I was first told and. Yeah, on track so far. You're about two more minutes. With uh, such an experienced line coming back on offense, does that allow you to expand anything you're doing, or, or do you yeah. just do what you do best? No, we're we're having we we'll, we'll have to expand, um, and yeah, when you when your intent is to win the Coastal Division, staying the same, uh, really in anything, uh, isn't the way to do that. So. Uh, the offensive front will take on more as right. we become more creative, more innovative, but also then when we have to be traditional, can be. And so uh, in some ways, traditional is creative for us as we've moved from and innovated away from that. In a lot of areas, at some point, you have to do that too. And I think they're capable. What's it like bringing a guy like Chris Peace back to the Chris Peace was was labeled by uh, um, an NFL general manager to me, face-to-face, um, -face, the hardest practice player he'd ever seen. Who better would you want your team to learn from than the hardest practice player that a general manager with gray hair had ever seen and well-known? And it's a, he's exactly who I want. So when you have Chris Peace and Dante Wilkins as two graduate assistants, Quinn Blanding working in personnel. Um, we'll put it this way. There's a reason the transfer portal isn't full of UVA players and UVA coaches don't go in terms of retention rate. And there's a reason they come back. And I think, well, I think 
they believe in what we're doing, and I certainly believe in them. And so I'm lucky he's here. When you, you talk about defending the Coastal, but when players are asked about it, they don't even want to think about the past. Is that pretty gratifying? They've been coached well. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gratifying um, because it's easy to provide sound bites, which I have today probably already. But um, yeah, our intent is to win it again. Um, they know there's way more to it, and and they have other things to focus on. Uh, but that's what we want to do. Coach, right, along so, the same uh, lines, this will be last question. But Coach, along the same lines, you talked about the assistant coaches and all the staff. But also, you talk about you know a lot of coaching analysts you brought in, like one particular, like Thad Wells, a guy that you brought in was a high school coach. Just talk about just that level for your coaching. Uh, Coach Wells, uh, about three years ago, came into my office and we had a connection. He's a pas passionate and avid learner and reader, and um, he has just been in contact ever since and um, has chosen to take a leap of faith toward college football. And uh, we also will have another analyst um, that you'll recognize soon. Um, he's going through background checks and what the hiring process is. but. Um, it's a new stage in the program where we're being sought out by those that want to go into college football, but also think our program and maybe the design and architecture of it might add value. So it's great.